So we're going to get right into this. When I was planing this down, the grain was actually going two different directions, and I should have cut it in half because I ended up getting some tear out, which uh, you'll see here later. And the fence here needs to be a little bit taller. I don't have that set up yet from this table saw yet. Uh, if you're not comfortable doing it this way, cutting these in half, then just you know do what works for you. Then I planed those down after they were split in half, and you see that I actually did cut these down shorter here. And you see here just the four exterior sides. And we did some trigonometry to figure out what angle here ended up with a 73 degree angle, or 17 depending on which way you're coming from. And I just cut those. That should have done for the middle as well, uh, at the same time as the two exteriors. You'll see here later, I had to kind of adjust for that. And getting the two, the front and back here, so I can put my angles on those to cut down here as well. Uh, set my fence here to the, the front piece here. I'm just going to cut that flat part for the front. And then I do set up for a 17 degree cut and cut the back and then the front as well. And now here's that middle piece that I should have cut at the same time and I had to kind of mark for that and adjust. Now I'm measuring the perimeter of the outside here, the front, back, and the two sides, and I'm going to cut a 1 8 inch uh, rabbit into those. Just I did a 1 8 inch all the way around uh, to recess in everything to the front, back, uh, and then the middle as well. And I set that stop up at uh, 0.25 inches because each of these I plane down to 0.35 and my blade is 0.1 inches. I don't have a dado insert for this table saw yet, uh, so that's why I'm doing it this way instead of using a dado stack. And I'm just cutting little pieces at a time. I could just set the beginning and then the end and... Um, just cut it from there, but I did a little bit each time. You see the outside there, I have that rabbit. Now I am measuring the middle, and I'm going to set, you see I'm measuring my 0.25 inches there, and I will um, cut the middle. I did the front and back, and if you do that uh, this way, make sure that you set them to mirror each other, and you're not rotating them around because otherwise they're going to be offset unless they're exactly centered. And then next I'm going to cut the interior dividers to width and you're going to see I'm going to do one divider on one side and two dividers on the other. So now that I have that cut to width I'm just going to mark my height there for the first divider and I'm not doing it exactly in the middle or anything like that so that's why I'm marking it that way and I'm just going to use my white pencil because that's what I can see uh, see well with the dark walnut and I'm going to mark the parts that I'm going to cut out showing where I'm which part I am getting rid of and I'm going to set this once again to a point or I'm sorry to 17 degrees you see there probably can't see that uh, digital readout very well but that's 17 and I'm just going to verify with the interior just to make sure everything is at, uh, the same and make sure that um, I'm being safe there. The interior, or the other side here, I am once again just measuring the front and back dividers there. 
and you see I'm doing the exact same thing. Like I said before, they had that uh, tear out, so I am trying to get as get rid of as much of that as possible. So the sections that do have that tear out, I am going to use for uh, getting rid of. And I'm just double checking my measurements here before I reset my fence, and then reset checking it again to the blade and checking the angle again. And once again, I set my blade at a 1 8 inch depth, and I had to reattach that wedge with a piece of a couple pieces of painter's tape because the angle I couldn't uh, do a straight cut from that other side unless I did that. And when you do so, if you notice, I am putting my um, push block that's on top of both sections of that blue painter's tape. So you see there, that way nothing's going to pop up at me. I'm pushing, putting uh, that down on both sections there. And now I flip it around and I'm doing my two sections of the other side. And I'm using the Incra um, miter gauge here and I'm going to put a link to which one I'm using in that description because I really uh, do like this thing. I did a lot of research when I before I bought this to make sure that I was going to get the best value and I really do uh, like this one and so yeah I'm gonna I'm gonna put the the link in the description for this and I'm just gonna use my little chisel clean out my uh, imperfections on there and if you have a, a shoulder plane or something you can use that on the uh, little rabbits there and because I cut that middle piece separate from the outsides, it was a little bit longer, maybe 16th or 32nd of an inch too long. So just using the hand plane and cleaning that up. And I'm using a quarter inch plywood for the bottom of the box. So each of the interior pieces, I'm removing a quarter of an inch. And then the exterior pieces, I'm going to do a rabbit along the bottom. Same thing, it's uh, going to be an eighth of, an eighth of an inch deep. And same thing, you know, one quarter of an inch uh, down. So I'm going to have to, because the way that I have my fence, I don't have a wooden fence that has a clearance or anything. Uh, so I am going to have to just keep, you know, edging away. You see my little makeshift push block there that's... Uh, taken a big brunt of the saw so that I don't uh, have any um, stiff pieces, any rigid pieces that are going to get uh, chewed up. And because I left a little bit on the bottom, since I don't have a clearance or anything like that, I am having to once again clean that up. It wasn't too bad. So now I'm cutting. This is what I had. I didn't have a single piece of quarter inch plywood and so I did uh, cut this out of two pieces and you'll see I'm just making sure that I'm getting that the right direction and I ended up gluing those together. While they are gluing up, I'm just going to sand all of my uh, pieces of walnut here do you know one I think I did a hundred or 110 uh, grit here and then I'm gonna follow that up with a 220 for my final sanding um, yeah this is a 110 because this is where I am cleaning up all of the um, cut marks and all that just making sure all of the burrs everything is nice and smooth and I did not record it, but I did, like I said, a final 220 grit sanding here. And my daughter did want her name in the front of her makeup box, which is, I actually pitched that to her. And we found a font that she liked, and so I'm using the laser engraver here. That first part there was f normal speed, and now I've completely sped this up. Uh, it really didn't take too long. I'm going to put a link, uh, I think, in the description to this laser engraver here, too, because it's... 
I once again I don't like spending lots of money on things so I try to get the best value for what I pay and I really do it's it seems to be working really well and now I'm going for my glue up here which is to me always the most nerve-wracking I, I really like if I'm making a box or a frame or something like that I do like having my strap clamp here and then setting everything inside that way I'm not trying to uh, put pieces together that are falling down or anything I feel like that kind of holds it in really well and so I'm just kind of gluing everything up um, because you'll see here in a little bit I am gonna have to fix a couple uh, um, little faults of my own and so I did not do my finish before the glue up so I'm you know, right now I'm mixing a little bit of my sawdust and when I do the sawdust here I actually sift it out to get the big pieces out mixing my sawdust with some glue and now you'll see here I am cleaning up my little imperfections I always say I'm not perfect and neither is my work so I'm just gonna fill those in and now I'm filling the tear outs in at the back these are the ones that I couldn't really get rid of and so I'm filling that in you'll see that the uh, finish does not adhere to that um, the glue up at all so now I'm just uh, after that set up I'm taking just a piece of sandpaper and cleaning up all of those uh, glue up pieces <laughs> Sorry, I'm going to leave that little bit in there. I am recording the audio outside here, and I had a wasp that was just attacking me. And that was, um, I, I left the, or I cut the part out where I was trying to really get it away, but, um, you know, I like to, I like to leave those in, some of those in there. So, um, anywho, I'm just kind of cleaning up those, like I said, those imperfections as well as the rough edges so that, um, yeah, just cleaning up the rough edges. Now I am using an oil-based finish for, well, for the finish, I guess. And um, like I said, I didn't do this before the glue up and you see on the back there where that glue is not um, taking the finish, of course. And so that's a good thing that I guess I put that on the back. And um, I don't think my daughter cares too much. She knows that I'm not perfect. So anyway, I'm putting this all on with a sponge brush. And then you'll see here I'm going to come and kind of wipe the finish off of the ex excess. I do three coats here, but I'm only showing the first uh, application. And I'm going to clean this up. I do a um, Scotch-Brite pad uh, that I clean it up in between my coats and then like I said on this one I did three coats so there is the final product with her uh, with all of her stuff in there and um, I kind of helped her you know figure out how she wants it to everything to go in there and that's how it turned out so yeah thank you for watching and please if you like this subscribe to see the rest of the videos that I put out